Joining me now is News Corp columnist Angela Mollard and Royal expert Pandora Forsyth. Lady, this photo scandal with Kensington Palace has absolutely raged all week. Angela, I appreciate there's an objection to the photo being elevate, uh, edited, but has it been blown out of proportion? And is there really this existential trust issue which has been breathlessly talked about all week? Look, it's a tricky question because yes and no. Look, Kate has, as we know, apologised for uh, the fact that she edited this picture. This is something that everybody does. But the problem is that in the age of AI and disinformation and generation of pictures, the palace has always had that uh, saying, they have to be seen to be believed. Well, now they have to be credible to be believed. So to answer your question, Caroline, do they need, is this an existential crisis? I don't think it is a crisis. There's far worse crises that I've covered with the royal family over the years. But I think it's one that begs the question is, is the palace, Kensington Palace and, and Buckingham Palace, are their PR machines up to speed? They are now operating in a social media media universe, but they don't seem to be up to speed with how to play in that universe. It's all very well, you know, everybody now is a brand, everybody has their own megaphone through social media, but if you are going to do it, then you need to do it properly. And what's also really sad about this is that um, Kate and William have always given us pretty good access. They've taken photos themselves of their own children. I wonder how that might now affect that. Kate is clearly going to be annoyed. She's going to be um, very cautious about what she does going forward. So those lovely photos that we've seen for, you know, 10, 11 years now of the children, we may not see them again. So I don't, I don't think it's a massive trust issue, but I think it will play out for some time to come. Pandora, you're there in the UK. And while we know what's been making the rounds mm. on social media, does that translate to the sentiment on the ground amongst Britons? Yeah, I mean, the mistrust, especially online, is very evident and, and it's very much there. And the way that these social media platforms now work is any negative feedback gets brought onto everybody's feeds. Uh, social media is awash with rumours, conspiracy theories. Um, Kensington Palace do acknowledge that, do acknowledge that, should I say, because they did say social media madness and, and, and everything that comes with it the week before they decided to release this image. Now, the ironic thing here is the image was actually supposed to calm down social media rumours, but actually it just ramped them up even more so. And now they leave themselves in this really tricky situation where they've essentially gone off their own line where it was, you will not hear from Catherine until after Easter. Well, that they went off it. So now it's opened the door to more speculation, more questions from the media and from journalists in the UK saying, well, you went off your own rule book. So now it's kind of opened the door for us to ask questions here in the UK. And we've spoken so much about Meghan Markle's proposed new venture and, and we saw a sneak peek of the American Riviera Orchard uh, this week. Now, Angela, what is this new project and, and what's her differentiating factor? I don't really know what a differentiation uh, is here. Look, American Riviera Orchard, you know, it's really long. It apparently refers to the area where she lives in and, and that sort of lovely orchardy type environment. I don't have a problem with this. I actually think this is right up her street. She's done this before with the TIG. She had that lifestyle blog. She's always said, you know, she, there's been a lot of rumours in, in the last couple of years that she wants to set herself up as a sort of Gwyneth Paltrow, uh, Martha Stewart type figure. It's entirely OK for her to do that. I mean, the prince, prince when he was Prince uh, Charles, the king, uh, set up Duchy Originals, which is a, a sort of organic farming, um, produce, biscuits, teas, that sort of thing that he made at Highgrove. And the money and the proceeds from that went back into that estate. I actually think this is very on brand for Megan. I have signed up. I'm, I'm already a subscriber to that, uh, to, <laughs> to her newsletter. So I'm really looking forward to that content. And, you know, something that she's doing in her own right, earning money. They've got a lot of bills to pay. They have big security. Good for her. Yeah, I totally agree. And it surprises absolutely no one who watches this show that you've already signed up as a subscriber, <laughs> Angela. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, Pandora, look, there's occasionally criticism of the Sussexes using their royal connections for commercial purposes. Does, does this offend the rule here or is it rather separate? Yeah, so it's interesting. So if you actually go onto the Instagram, she says, Megan, 
and then says the Duchess of Sussex. Now, part of the agreement was, uh, w when they left the royal family but kept the titles, was you can't monetize the titles um, to a certain extent. So the fact she's using the Duchess, but she's led with Meghan, I think might, might she might just get away with it because she's led with Meghan, not the Duchess, on Instagram, um, which shows her, you know, it's four years on since that freedom flight when she, when she did announce it. And the timing was very key. I mean, that's a whole nother, another topic in terms of the timing of it all. Um, but there is a market for it. And, and as, as Angela has just said, this is very Megan. This is very her. I can see how, I can see why and how she's done it because of, because of her background with the TIG beforehand. But when you monetize and, and buy products uh, by using, part of the reason why you're buying it is by using the Duchess name, well, then you might lead yourself with a bit of a problem. But because she's led with Megan and not the Duchess, I think she might just get away with it. We will see. No doubt there'll be criticism, even if it's not necessarily warranted. But Pandora, mm. I'll stay with you for this next one. And look, despite uh, the rumours of this week, and there have been plenty, Camilla and William have continued with their royal engagements. What have they been up to? Yeah, so uh, there was a set piece this week, which was the Commonwealth Day service. This is a, a really big uh, day in the royal calendar. This is usually where you see all of the senior royals coming together. Uh, this week, we just saw the Prince of Wales um, and, and the Queen, uh, Camilla, there together alongside some uh, less senior royals. Obviously, they weren't with their better halves, but that was to be expected. We know we weren't going to see Catherine when we know we weren't going to see the King either. Uh, but it did change it slightly but I think this week also has proved how much they're very much relying on each other at the moment in quite difficult circumstances and their relationship is so amicable at the moment they're so open with one another we got some lovely pictures of them uh, laughing laughing along um, at, at times outside uh, of the, the cathedral uh, and this will be going into uh, next week as well with uh, more Commonwealth uh, Day events too for the for the less senior working royals it's, it's a huge event in the calendar and they made most in quite difficult circumstances and their relationship has improved so much over the years look let's go back 10 15 years ago do you think they'd be sitting next to each other laughing along i don't think so so yeah they're really relying on each other at the moment whilst their better halves or their other half should i say um ha have their own uh health issues going on and Angela, despite Charles' health concerns, he's been attending to some official engagements, some online and some in person. What do we know about the way he's managing himself? Yeah, I think this is really interesting because, of course, he is going through treatment for cancer. We know that. We don't know specifics about that uh, that treatment. But he is wanting to still be uh, visible, doing royal work. So we've seen him. Yes, he wasn't at that Commonwealth um, ceremony, as, as Pandora mentioned, but he did put out a video at that event. He also met, and there were photographs of uh, at Buckingham Palace of him meeting with uh, Baroness uh, Patricia Scotland, who is the Secretary General of the Commonwealth of Nations. He has a deep and abiding affection for the Commonwealth. And, and yes, he understands that many countries within the Commonwealth are considering being republics. Some already have. And he welcomes that. He welcomes that discussion. But he really views the work of the monarchy, be, the monarchy to be central. Uh, the, one of the central jobs is, is, is the Commonwealth. And he'll have been very disappointed not to have been there. But I think being visible is clearly very important to him while he's at this stage of his treatment.